We're going to connect at scale Design Center to a Redshift Data Warehouse. So let's go and let's get started. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a Data Warehouse connection. So we are in Design Center now. We're going to click on Settings, and we're going to click on Data Warehouses. You can see we already have a connection here to our Snowflake Data Warehouse, and you can see that we have a Data Warehouse defined, and we have one connection defined. So let's do that for Redshift. So we're going to click on the Create Data Warehouses, and we're going to select Redshift as our data warehouse. So that's going to bring up the dialogue. So this is going to be information. This dialogues are going to be specific to each type of uh, data warehouse you want to connect. So today we're going to talk to Redshift. So I'm going to call it Redshift Data Warehouse. Um, this is a name that you want to, that's going to be referenced throughout AdScale Design Center application. So you're going to want it to be, uh, to be something that is, um, that's representative. So if you have multiple uh, data warehouses that you want to connect at scale to, you want to make sure that that's identifiable and it's unique. Um, today I only have one, so we're going to keep it simple. The database is the database where, uh, where at scale is first going to look. That's a default database in uh, Redshift. You'll find that on your console and then also an aggregate schema. This is important because this is where at scale is going to store its aggregate tables to improve performance. So you want to make sure that this schema already exists in your database and your data warehouse in Redshift and that you can read and write from it for whatever credentials you're going to use here. We can also create an S3 bucket. Why would I want to create an S3 bucket uh, reference here? This is to, if you want to load samples um, from at scale, um, this is where uh, we'll actually store the temporary files. Um, so I should create this today because I am going to load temporary files. I don't want to uh, type in my access key here in this demo, so I'm just going to disable that for now. Um, and, uh, and I'll show you how, what that looks like later. So now you see there's no date and connections defined. Well, we have to do one more step here, which is define connections. So why is it in, in a separate area? Well, what at scale allows you to create multiple connection types. So for example, you may want to create a separate resource for uh, those who are querying versus, versus the engines for the engine creating aggregates because you may want to have more resources when we're creating and managing aggregates than we are when we're actually querying those aggregates. So at scale allows you to create separate connections, which is really powerful um, and flexible and allows you to really tune your resources. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just choose Redshift today. I'm going to put in my host. That string right there comes from your, um, your Redshift, um, um, uh, Amazon Redshift uh, console. So that's where you can get that. I'm going to choose a username and password today. And I'm going to test my connection. Um, and hopefully everything's okay. Um, and, uh, and from here, I'm going to, um, I didn't get my password right. So there we go. Got my password right. You should get a green connection successful. That's where you know you're on the right track. Um, and so once I've done that now, um, what you're going to see here is that uh, what at scale will do is that this, um, it's going to say pull up and that's when I know everything is good to go. There we go. So it's now top to the Redshift warehouse and we're ready to we're ready to start modeling now. So one of the things you can do, of course, is if you come back to our home screen by clicking on this um, at scale icon, um, you can see that there's a number of different things we could do. We can create a model from scratch. Uh, we can even import models from some BI tools like Tableau and SSAS. Um, or we can import existing project XML. So if somebody else has created an at scale project, you can do that. And we also have this nifty thing to import samples. So um, let me show you how that works. So here's our sample wizard. And basically, we're going to upload a bundle um, from uh, a sample bundle. The sample bundle for at scale um, includes the, the raw data that will import, in this case, into your Redshift data warehouse, as well as the model project itself. So you kind of have an all-in-one project, the data and the model that can get you started and see it's a good representative project. You notice that there's a link up here. So if I click on that link, it's going to load a page here. And you can see I can download um, these, these, these sample applications. And they also have some drivers for your clients. 
Um, so I'm going to download my Sales Insights application. That's going to create a download a zip file or a bundle, again, that has that data as well as your project. So if I click back to that screen now, now I can choose, there's my Redshift Data Warehouse that we just created. I can choose a schema. Um, for example, I'm going to choose um, uh, my at scale schema. And then um, here's that destination directory. This is where your S3 uh, bucket would go. So if I created that S3 bucket, um, this is where I would reference the, the directory for S3. Now I, did, I didn't create that because I didn't want to show you all my credentials. Um, but um, I, what I also, the last step of this really is just to, to, to reference in your downloads folder that zip. So once I go ahead and fill in that directory, it's going to light up this next button. And I'm going to be able to choose all the defaults. And then what at scale is going to do is it's going to load that sample data and it's going to take you when it's all done it's going to take you all to it's going to take you right to our um, our design center canvas now rather than wait for that look to load i'm going to choose a different option here and i'm going to look directly upload my project xml for that that project because i've already loaded the data in redshift so i don't need to load it again so i'm going to go ahead and choose that and at this point that's the same end result is that you get your project called um, Internet Sales Cube. And if I go to my canvas, um, here is my project. Uh, kind of messy. If I go ahead and click on this Arrange Items um, button and this zoom in a little bit, you can see there's my project that I just imported with all my measures and all my dimensions. Now, if I want to see how this is done, you can see the relationships here. You can see I have some great dimensions to look at, like my customer dimension. If I double click on my Fact Internet Sales, that will get us into a preview and wrangling mode. So you can see a preview of our data and you can see that I can then add calculations. If I want to add a, add a, a, a calculated column, for example, um, I can um, edit columns like I can edit this calculation here. Um, and I can also apply and do some interesting wrangling things. Like, for example, I can replace my nulls um, in that field called sales reasons. I can say, give me get rid of those nulls and replace them with a string that's, that's more representative. We'll call it unknown. And I can save that um, and save that and create that as a new um, as a new transform and use that instead of using uh, the raw uh, form of that data. So, uh, so, so you can see now I got my data replaced um, and I can go ahead and save that and that becomes part of my model. So at this point, um, we now have um, our, our data warehouse connection um, defined. Um, we have um, a model that's connected to our data. We have our rich metadata model here. You see my customers and my, pro and my geography and my, my, um, with my geography hierarchies and my metrics. And now we're ready to go and publish this and to start consuming it. So that will be in, in the next tutorial. Um, and that's all for now.